As the war in Ukraine rages on, we are appalled almost daily by the images of destruction, torture and murder being inflicted on mostly innocent civilians. And we wonder about the evil that brings about such suffering and atrocities. Perhaps it is time for all people to recognise that there is something inherently evil in the makeup of humanity, and none of us can any longer refute the issue of the basic sinfulness that is part of our humanity, a sinfulness that must be addressed on a global, national, and yes, a personal level. World leaders will engage in endless negotiations in an attempt to secure peace. However, The truth is that they are not addressing the basic problem, fundamental evil in the human race. The reality is that humanity basically wants to turn a blind eye to human evil because they suspect that it is intuitive in all of us and they balk at addressing the problem on a personal basis. I suspect we are living in a no-fault generation where people have come to believe that they have little responsibility for wrongdoing and sin and evil are rarely spoken about. The writer of our opening song nails it when he writes, All have need of God's salvation, if with him they live forever. But a promise he has given, it is written, whosoever. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live, when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. In writing to the church at Ephesus, Paul is a realist, aware of humanity's inherent evil. In fact, he declares that unregenerate humanity is dead in their transgressions and sins. Most decent human beings want our world to be a better place and feel constrained to do all they can to enable that to occur. As we contemplate not only our world situation, but also the reality of the turmoil and evil within our own communities, there is a need for all to contribute to the betterment of those around us. And the question arises, what can I do to make the world a better place? And that is a fair and relevant question. The response to that question needs to be faced by looking in the mirror and acknowledging that the only evil I can deal with is that which is within. Now, that may well be an uncomfortable confrontation, but it is a reality with which I must deal personally. John Lythe's hymn, There is a Better World, they say, may well be about life in the hereafter, that is heaven. But that does not disqualify us from trying to build a better world here. Although the language of his song may be a little dated, the truth still holds. And though we're sinners, everyone, Jesus died. And though our crowns of peace is gone, Jesus died. We may be cleansed from every stain. We may be crowned with bliss again. And in that land of glory reign, Jesus died. Oh, God.
Reconciliation with our Creator God is the only answer to evil in this world. It is the central theme in the Bible and you may well ask, why do we need to be reconciled to God who created us? The answer is simply this, sin has estranged us from our Creator God. The natural state and environment of man is sinful, controlled and directed by Satan in ignorance of God and in disobedience to him, disobedience being the hallmark of a sinful person. In our unsaved state, we are doomed to death and corruption. In comparison, resurrection and life is to be found in Jesus Christ. A decision to embark on the process of reconciliation is significant in that it moves us from evil to righteousness, from death into life. We have the choice whether or not we remain because of the inherent evil within us, strangers and aliens separated and estranged from our God, or whether we choose to accept his way and conditions to be reconciled to the family of God. The need for reconciliation with God arises from the fact that we are all sinners and have gone our own way and separated ourselves from God. Now, contemporary society may want to debate that issue. However, contemporary society has a problem with the presence of evil in the world and what to do about it. A problem humanity, despite all its progress and knowledge, has not resolved. The reality is that evil is basically a disease of the human spirit, and as such, only a spiritual solution can resolve it. Herein lies the root cause of much of today's problems. Basically, people today are unwilling to believe and acknowledge that the evil of sin is part and parcel of all human beings. There is a sense which, because of our sin, we are God-forsaken. We have freedom of choice, which God has given us. We have the freedom to choose our own sinful way and be separated and estranged from God. In spite of our desire or choice to be reconciled with God, we cannot achieve this on our own merit. Reconciliation can only be secured through the death of Jesus and by his blood. We can choose to accept his sacrifice and blood, or we can choose to go on trying to earn, totally in vain, reconciliation with God. That prolific evangelical hymn writer Sidney Cox wrote, Are you seeking joys that will not fade, lasting pleasures by God's mercy made? Christ is waiting, fullness of joy he brings. Swing wide the door of your heart to the King of Kings.
The motivation for this reconciliation comes exclusively and uniquely from God himself. He is the initiator and the source. There is no thought in the Bible of God being reconciled to man, but rather man being reconciled to God. The wellspring of God's character, which is love and reconciliation, will always find its roots in love. It was God's love that began the whole process of reconciliation. However, no matter the depth of love and grace, reconciliation is a gift offered and intentionally received. God's plan for reconciliation was through Jesus Christ. There was no other way. There is no other way. In the final analysis, all things in creation will be reconciled to their creator through the sacrifice and blood of Jesus Christ. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. We must be careful lest we think that reconciliation comes as a result of the life and example of Jesus. It was only in his death and the shedding of his blood that reconciliation is made possible. Peace between God and man is procured through the blood of the cross. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the Church of Corinth, said, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. All things are of God. That is to say, what has preceded this verse, that is the new creation, is only possible by the power of God. There is no manner in which mortal man can affect any sort of new spiritual creation or spiritual reconciliation. The new creation is only possible through the sacrifice of Jesus and the shedding of his blood. It is by grace you have been saved, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not what these hands have done can save this guilty soul. Not what this toiling flesh has borne can make the spirit whole. Thy word alone, O Christ, can ease the weight of sin. Thy blood alone, O Lamb of God, can give me peace within.
One of the great evils of this world is the disease of alcoholism, a disease that destroys lives, families and communities. Step three in the AA program calls for a determined action and commitment to turning their lives over to God if the participant truly desires to conquer the evil of alcoholism. We made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. While at times we may sit in judgment of those enslaved with substance abuse, the truth is there is something of this broken person inside all of us. We are all, without exception, broken by the evil of sin and, like the alcoholic, we need to deal with it. And the only way we can deal with it is to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. Now, as uncomfortable as it is, evil is present within us. Jesus said, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. In our most honest moments, we recognise that it applies to us. It is only when we are prepared to be brutally honest with ourselves that we can confront the evil within. Paul says plainly that we were dead in your transgressions and sins, and the only resolution to our dilemma is to be forgiven and reconciled to our God. It is the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross that is the catalyst not only in our salvation, but also our reconciliation with our Father God. What we need to understand is that God does not need to be reconciled to humanity. Where there is estrangement, it is a one-sided estrangement. It is humanity who needs to be brought back to God. The New Testament does not speak of God being reconciled to humanity, but rather humanity being reconciled to God and God as the reconciler, taking the initiative through the redemptive death of Jesus. What we need to realise is that reconciliation with God is a powerful and transformative process that brings with it a sense of freedom, peace 
joy and fulfilment to those who are willing to embark upon the journey. It is a journey that commences with an honest appraisal of self, including our sinful self. In all the negativity about sin and evil paramount here is the heart of God to be reconciled with his creation. Jesus made it quite clear that this is the very heart of God. I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Ring the bells of heaven, there is joy today, for the wanderer now is reconciled. Yes, a soul is rescued from his sinful way and is born anew, a ransom child.